Um, next, we'll be diving deep into the taxonomy and of, of sunfishes, and there is no one who knows more than that, <laughs> than Etsuro Sawai. Um, Etsuro um, Sawai got his PhD. Good morning, Etsuro. Hey, good to <laughs> Thank you. Well, I don't Thank think you, you're there in Japan. You're speaking to coming to us all the way from Japan. Um, you got your PhD at Hiroshima University and you created the Ocean Sunfish Information Storage Museum. I remember we met a long time ago at the American Museum of Natural History. And you've been obsessed with the sunfish for many, many years, many years. <laughs> we have gathered more resources and references than anyone on the planet and published your own book on them as well. So um, mm -hmm. I, I definitely urge, and you're a researcher and an artist of the sunfish, amazing, um, amazing breadth of mola knowledge. So I, Etsuro is in our art show, and there is a link to his um, where you can find uh, his artistic creations in his book. Um, you can also um, type into Amazon. But um, I'm very excited to hear your talk. Etsuro has recorded it, but then he'll come back afterwards to answer a couple questions. And um, so, Etsuro, do you want to just? Um, say introduce your talk or should we just cut right to your talk now okay <laughs> and now japan is at midnight uh, ocean sun fish is one of the most popular fish in japan uh, i am also one of the japanese people who like ocean sun fish i want to know everything about ocean sun fishes but what i am uh, most interested in uh, is the exact number of Morito fishes. Uh, do you know uh, this snack? Uh, this, this is a famous snack in Japan. Do you think uh, what the species of uh, this sunfish in this photo is? Uh, I think uh, Mora Alexandrini, not Mora Mora. Uh, I have mainly studied the Japanese of ocean sunfish so far, uh, but uh, I am not good at English, so please watch the recorded video. Hello, I am Etoro Sawai, the presenter. I talk about large size records and taxonomic history of modern ocean sunfishes, Moridi. Before starting the presentation, I will briefly introduce myself. I worked on the second chapter of this book with Marianne Nayegard and Yusuke Yamanoue. I am a crazy sunfish researcher. I will be unemployed in this April. However, I created a personal activity group, Mambo Nandem Hakubutsuka, Ocean Sunfishes Information Storage Museum, to continue my study on sunfishes. My homepage is made in Japanese, but you can be automatically translated into English by Google Translate. My group is still online only, but I hope to set up a store in the future. Because I am active as a researcher, but also an artist. From now on, I will have no income, so I have to figure out a way to get money. I also personally create a sunfish literature database. If you like, please send me your new papers. So here goes the main part. The sunfishes family Moridi differ significantly from the typical shape of bony fish. Sunfishes have completely lost their caudal fin element. It looks like a cow dolphin, but it is called Crabus. The Crabus forms from a part of the dorsal fin and the anal fin. Therefore, the standard legs used for typical body fish cannot be used for some fishes. We suggest using pre-crabus band legs instead of 
standard rings of the typical bony fish. Some fishes belong to the order Tetraodontiformes, and is closely related to porcupine fishes and puffer fishes. Currently, the molide is genetically and morphologically accepted to consist of three genera and five species. The standard English names and scientific names of the five varied species are as shown. Four of the five species are similar in morphology at first glance, which has led to species confusion and misidentification around the world. For example, the image photo of Moramora on the IUCN red list mistakenly use a photo of Mora Alexandrini. Some individuals are different to identify two species level due to individual variation. However, adult fish can generally be identified to species level by the taxonomic characters shown here. Please see our chapter 2 for detailed morphological characteristics of each species. So far, no sex differences in morphology other than gonads have been found in any of the five species. Additionally, the body scales around the pectoral fin are useful as a taxonomic character for the three molar species, which are particularly easily confused. However, taxonomic characters become clearer with age. Small individuals of genius molar are very similar in morphology and should be carefully examined for morphology. In particular, the morphology of the larval and juvenile stages of genius molar needs to be investigated in conjunction with DNA analysis. From the past to the present, including the current five species, the scientific names of 56 nominal species have been proposed for modern molidi. Here, I take a brief look back at its taxonomic history. As far as we know, there are two pieces of literature from 1554 where molidi are clearly identified. Rondelet called this fish Osagorishiko or Nunapeshi, while Salviani called it Mora. Researchers in the 1500s wrote that Aristotle also had a description of this fish, but I have so far not been able to confirm it. The picture by the two authors looks like a Mora Mora, but there is no description to identify the species, so we cannot identify it clearly. The study of the moiety began from the Mediterranean Sea. Linnaeus proposed the binomial name for species naming and described the first moiety species, Mora Mora. However, Linnaeus confused Mora and Lanzania when describing Mora Mora because Linnaeus described Mora Mora based on literature sources. It was found that there were no type specimens. Penant describes the second moldy species, Landania rabies, based on a figure. No type specimen known. Landani reviewed literature and accepted six genera and seventeen species with two figures. We confirmed the holotypes of two species Landani had drawn. One is third species. Mora Alexandrini. Another is a junior synonym of Mora Mora, Ozdora Ozzini. We designated the holotype of Ozdora Ozzini as the neotype of Mora Mora. Leonard described the fourth Molly species as Tulus lanceolatus with a figure. No type specimen known. Gansa reviews literature 
and reduce the number of valid nominal species in Molidae and accepted one genius and three species. Laser Brunner reviewed literature and accepted three genera and five species until the application of DNA analysis. His classification was widely used. Valenti made a checklist of scientific names of Molidae from species level to genius level, useful for collecting original descriptions of Molidae to the era of genetic analysis. Yamanoe called genetically confirmed by mitochondrial DNA that there are at least three genera and three species in the Molidae. From now on, I will focus on the recent taxonomic review of the genius Mora. Base et al. found that two more species, according to Fraser Brunner 1951's classification, were genetically divided into the Pacific and Atlantic populations, respectively. Sagara et al. also found two genetically distinct populations within Mora Mora in Japanese waters, including data from previous studies. Yoshita et al. suggested that the genius Mora is genetically divided into three groups at the species level. Naegaoto et al. and Sawai et al. genetically and morphologically understood the taxonomic review of the genius Mora and identified the scientific names of the three species along with the type specimen designation. Of these, Mora Tecta was the first new species of the genius Mora in 125 years. However, Mora Mora still has taxonomic problems. Base et al. 2005 found that Mora Mora were genetically divided into the Pacific and Atlantic populations. Until now, no morphological differences between the two populations of Mora Mora have been found. But recent studies suggested that the Atlantic population may have a more pronounced head bump than the Pacific population. I used to think that Mora Mora with a pronounced head bump was simply an expression of variation between individuals within the same species, but it may show species level differences. International collaborative research is needed to solve this problem. I have a lot of Pacific data, so I am looking for co-researchers from Atlantic. My biggest interest is knowing how many species of modern ocean sunfishes exist in the world. We also need to continue to accumulate genetic and morphological data to determine whether there is only one species of Tanzania and Mastilus, respectively, in the world. Photographs of early specimens are very important. It helps to re-identify species in the old literature. The shape of the crabat of Gessner's figure is subtle, but I feel that it is more similar to Mora Alexandrini than Atlantic Mora Mora. Please note that the larger size of the Molidae may traditionally be cited by estimated weight. We have re-examined the scientifically reliable largest size record that were actually measured. Maximum length, maximum weight. If you find a larger record that was measured accurately, please revise this table. I supplement about a record of the heaviest more Alexandrini. Whether the species in this record is Mora Mora or Mora Alexandrini is also discussed in this book. 
I got a photo of the clubbers from another angle of this specimen. I clearly identified this specimen as Mora Alexandrini from the very large head bump, pronounced chin bump, and the rounded clubbers. This specimen was also certified by Guinness World Records as the heaviest bony fish specimen on 14 September 2018. Moreover, there is a record of 117 kilograms of Mora Alexandrine's ovary from Taiwan. I believe Mora Alexandrine is the largest species in the Moridi. Finally, I published in Japanese language books on ocean sunfishes for the general public in 2017 and 2019. Here, you can get sunfish knowledge that is different from the information in the new symposium book. If you are interested, you can buy it at Amazon.com. At the very end, do you know Amabie? Amabie is a Japanese folklore sea monster with the power to fend off plagues born in 1846. Curiously, during the COVID-19 pandemic, it happened to find a woodblock print of a ocean sunfish with the inscription, Fend of Plagues, from the Edo period. I share this picture with you, all in the hope that we will soon overcome this crisis and be able to actively study the sunfishes. Thank you for watching. Oh, it's zero. Amazing, Hi. amazing presentation. Domo arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and I just would like to do a big shout out to you. I mean, as you said, 56 nominal species. So it sorting out what species is, is a true species, which name goes with which species has just been a, a huge effort, a Herculean effort and um, mm -hmm. has required years of your, you know, a patient, diligent work, working with museum specimens, working um, in the field with live specimens. And there's just been so much taxonomic confusion that- Oh, um, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, um, and I think you found a, a kindred spirit in Mayana Nygaard as well, who's, who's taken on the b both of you to really sort out all that confusion that has been with us for you know hundreds of years so uh, um i'm just uh, you know can't thank you enough for this work and it's so interesting to bring up this um you know we genetically we found that different population down there in south africa a long time ago but never had the morphological specimen to to see what it really was. And so it took it took your efforts and Mayana's efforts to really bring that new species to the world and identify it and name it um, with Molotecta. Um, and this these differences between the Atlantic and the Pacific Mola Mola, mm -hmm. morphologically different. That's certainly another mystery that that we all need to collaborate on to, to solve. So um so you bring up some really, you know, sort of uh, basic, basic things that we still don't know about the mola genus. That there's more mola to discover. Certainly. Could I, yeah. Could I chip in with a quick question there? Thank you. I really appreciated your your there. So, so uh, my Japanese arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, Something that Tierney, uh, myself, and Natasha Phillips worked on was this thing about taking anecdotal, you know, sightings when people saw sunfish, and it's it's so hard to do. I wonder how far we could get 
with public sightings with getting a better resolution can we get beyond genus do you have does that question make sense oh <laughs> um, okay. i think so, um, i think we we are going to be um talking about that mayana has um we, I mentioned this in the Sunfish and Society chapter as well as as, um, as something that Mayana will be talking about in the Molotekta um, talk. The, the importance of how citizen science data can be used and the pitfalls and the power of it. Um, to, to be able to, you know, some of these, um, some of these species are cryptic and you have to take your picture at just the right angle and at just the right time because mola can change their coloration at whim. So, so um, and, and then depending on the angle that will make their morphology look different. And so there are features that Etsuro has found and Mayana have found that are distinctive for each species. And those are hard to see um, with just photos but not impossible if you know what to take a picture of. So, so we do we do talk about that later today. We um, several of the speakers will be talking about the importance of citizen science data. The perfect the weekend, then. Thank you. Um, and um, and certainly there is a huge role for that, but but you have to take a pretty good picture. <laughs> 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 Area. Well, picture, picture is very important. <laughs> yeah, it's really important. But I mean, I'd like to just, I'm glad you bring that up, Jonathan, because the whole way we've been able to find out anything about these animals is by people out in the field sending in samples, people who don't even study sunfish, taking a tissue sample, sending, a, sending it to um, Japanese groups or um, us in the US, to do genetic analyses or in the UK. So um, it all depends on people being out there, knowing that there are researchers like us who exist and knowing where to send the samples. And what I'm hoping from this symposium um, is that we can really um, solidify our collaborations. So mm -hmm. everyone feels a part of the discoveries and, and has a role to play. And you know we can put our egos aside, <laughs> just, <laughs> move forward to to discovery together yeah well i'm not even going to attempt to do what you do at Suro. that's that's like proper science and everything so um <laughs> yeah i'm very happy to 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 yeah to pass on any information like that but thanks man i really really learned a lot there i thought that was cool thank you yes thank you so yes. much Suro. and um <laughs> And then, and everyone, do tune into the art show later because Atsuro has his um, his work there as well. And Atsuro, is it okay if we share your email with the with? The oh yes, yes, the email, please. <laughs> okay. Please me. So we will share um, Atsuro's email if you have questions for him um, in particular, as well as um, any mola information you want to share on your own. So <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> all righty well that that's amazing at, at sura i met him many many years ago and he's just you know i thought i was obsessed with sunfish Whew. <laughs> at Suro, he he's really one of the most obsessed sunfish people on the planet and um and rightly so <laughs> <laughs>